Welcome back to Center Stage. We are joined by Darren, not Duran, Williams of the Brooklyn Nets, their star point guard. We have a, a new segment on the show that we call the Did You Ever? All right, so some quick hits with you about that. Ready? Is this yes or no? Well, just whatever. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Did you ever want to be seven feet tall? No. No? Did you ever steal something? Yes. What was it? Can't, can't incriminate myself. <laughs> Statue of limitations <laughs> is over. Uh, probably stole a couple of candy bars from the uh, corner store by my house. Okay. Did you ever lie to your mom? Yeah. About what? I can't even count. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever eat an entire pizza? Yeah. Did you ever talk your way out of a traffic ticket? Yeah. Did you ever want to punch an opponent in the mouth? Yes. <laughs> Who was that? Couple people. <laughs> no. No, I, I like Ray, man. I like Ray. Me and Ray are friends, man. I look at you now, stylishly dressed, great socks, by the way. Thank you. Uh, diamond earrings, king of Brooklyn. You ever walk past a mirror and go, oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man. I try not to be. <laughs> I don't feel myself that much. No? All no. Right. <laughs> Did you ever feel sorry for an opponent? Uh, probably. Yeah? Not for, like, beating them or, you know, if somebody gets injured or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Did you ever take the subway to the Barclays Center? Yes. How was that? It was cool. People rec recognized It was cool except for I got, I got a little lost. Both times I never ended up at the one that goes right outside. I had to walk, like, half a mile. Gotcha. I got to try it again. Okay. Did you ever ask your ex-teammate... Chris Humphreys, if he was really sure about that marriage. <laughs> you said nothing unexpected before. The, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I might have asked him a couple things. Let's go stay between us. All right. All right, that's it for Did You Ever. All right. <laughs> After your performance in the 07 NBA playoffs, you're pretty much, would you agree, established as a star in the NBA? You're accepted. This is one of our best players. Yeah, I mean, I think people started to recognize. Mark Jackson gave me a lot of praise throughout the playoffs, which definitely helped. And, you know, I felt like I kind of made that jump, you know, to the next level, especially with my run in the playoffs. Now, the next year, 18.8 points and 10.5 assists per game. The Jazz won 54 games. And shockingly enough, Jerry Sloan allows you to call all the plays, which he never allowed John Stockton to do. How did this come about? Well, I think it's a little over... Is it? Exaggerated. Yeah, I mean, I didn't call all the plays. I think he knew I had a good feel for how the game's going, and I knew, you know, the offense so well. And I, and I think John Stockton was the same way. I mean, you know, when he was running up the floor, he was looking for, you know, a fast break opportunity. They didn't have anything. You know, they're right into a set. So, right. you know, that, that, that was it. It wasn't like I was just controlling the whole offense, just kind of being an extension of the coach out there. Darren, was it tough to be in Utah when you follow John Stockton, like if you follow Mickey Mantle in the center field for the Yanks? Not really. I, never, I feel like there was a big enough gap, even though they, they mentioned it all the time. I feel like there was a big enough gap where I didn't feel that pressure. Like, if I would have came in the next year, that's a different story. All right, so that year, the Lakers knock you out of the playoffs in the second round, but you have a really special summer, 2008 gold medal. Tell me about that. How important was that for you? It was a great, great experience. You know, Kid winning was your teammate, right? Yeah, he was. Yeah. You know, winning gold medals, you know, that's, that's my biggest accomplishment as, a, as an mm -hmm. athlete. And, you know, getting to represent your country and, you know, just have that whole Olympic experience. There's not a lot of people that get a chance to compete in the Olympics. And you know, so I feel definitely blessed, you know, that I was able to experience that and, you know, had a lot of fun doing it. And that was called the Redeem Team. So there was pressure on you guys. It wasn't it was like... Of, it was a lot of pressure on us, man. I mean, the stuff that people were writing, you know, I still remember Chris Sheridan, some of his stuff. He just wanted, it's like they just wanted us to lose. Right. Just didn't think we had what it takes. Besides the Spain game, we dominated pretty much everybody we played against. Was this your number one sports experience up to that point? Uh, yeah, definitely. Now, where's your gold medal, the first one? Uh, at my house. Yeah, you display it or you have it hidden? No, I got it hidden. Ah, uh, good. Safe. This could get stolen. Yeah, could. 2008-2009, <laughs> uh, you missed the first 13 of 15 games with an ankle sprain. You hit the all-star break, 19.2 points per game of 10 assists. But again, you're not selected. What's going on with that? Are you starting to get aggravated? I think the injury was a, a reason. Even though I missed those first 13 games, I wasn't myself for another you know, month and a half, two months, and so it just kind of kind of took me out of the rhythm of things. You had five consecutive 30-point games that season. That was the first point guard to do that since Pete Maravich. Pretty heady confidence. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that year the uh, Jazz lose another playoff series to the Lakers. The following season, you're finally selected to the All-Star game, and it's in Dallas. How cool is that? <laughs> it was great. Even though it was a long wait and I felt it was, it was overdue, you know, for me to get to play my first one in front of 
all my fans, I mean, all my family and friends. They made it really special. The next year, um, Carlos Boozer leaves as a free agent. February 7, 2011, Jerry Sloan and his assistant Phil Johnson both resign. And, of course, somebody has to be blamed, and you're getting a, an ugly tag, which I don't know if, if you feel was warranted. Oh, he's a coach killer. He got rid of him. Mm -hmm. What's your reaction when you hear this? I don't this? even know what a coach killer is to this day. Uh -huh. I haven't killed a coach, I don't think. Um, but, but Sloan did defend you. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we got into it that, that game. And so uh, I think because we got into it that game mm -hmm. and, and then he resigned, then it was me that did it. But, I mean, we honestly, it wasn't even that bad, and we've had worse arguments, mm -hmm. you know. And any team, coaches and players have arguments, any team I've ever been on. And I've seen some bad ones. I have nothing but respect for Coach Sloan. You know, I had a great time uh, playing for him. I felt felt blessed to, you know, have my first five years in the NBA, you know, to play for a Hall of Fame coach uh, such as him. Sixteen days later, boom, you get traded to the Nets. Did they ever give you a reason? They had talked about me re-signing that summer right. or signing an extension that summer, and I wouldn't commit to it because it was just too early for me. You know, I wanted to see the direction the team was moving, and so I think instead of going through a similar situation like, you know, with Carmelo and Dwight, um, they just went ahead and and made a move. Was there a chance you would have re-signed there? Yeah, I think it could have, but um, I wanted, definitely wanted to test free agency and see what, what else was out there. All right, so it ends up being New Jersey where it gets traded. We'll talk about that trip when we come back.